Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Honeysuckle Haven and Craft Run the Clock. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you're having a good week. If you are out there, say hi and let me know you're out there. If you are new to the Honeysuckle Haven, I would like to know that, or new to Craft Run the Clock, um, let me know that too. If you're watching on replay, you could put hashtag replay in the comments. So we are going to do a fun, um, another easy Dollar Tree craft. <laughs> I know I've been doing a lot of Dollar Tree crafts, but um, it's getting close to the holidays and we're going to be shopping and just when you're crafting, it's fun to craft on a budget. So that's what we're going to do tonight. And then the craft that we're going to make tonight also could double as a gift for Christmas because Christmas is right around the co corner. You can make this really at a really low cost. Um, make several of them and give them as gifts if it's something that you like. So say hi and let me know you're out there. I see some people hopping on. I'm going to get my paper towel ready here and get some things ready while you guys are saying hi. And we're going to use a Dollar Tree cutting board tonight. They come in all different colors. We're using a white one. We're going to use some Dollar Tree craft sticks, hot glue, pretty napkin that one of my sweet friends sent me. Kirsten sent me this pack of napkins. Actually, I have her son in my class. Um, and so she sent this pack in with him. So we're going to use these tonight. So we're going to use those. And I am going to, at the end of the video, um, be sending a 10 of these out. So send 10 if you sprinkle, comment, do all those fun things. Um, you'll get a, you'll have a chance of getting one of those sent. So we're going to do that tonight. Hello, hello, Cindy and Ellen and Linda and Karen and Amanda. Thank you for joining tonight. And there's my friend Pam is out there and Jackie. Thanks for joining ladies. So we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to peel off this sticker. I started painting my cutting board ahead of time. I painted one side. Ooh, that's really loud. Just peel this right off. These come from Dollar Tree in the kitchen area, of course, and we're going to paint them a pretty moss green tonight. And it's Waverly Wax or Waverly Chalk Paint. I use the wax so much. I'm used to saying Waverly Wax. The Waverly Chalk Paint in the color moss. Don't look at my messy jar. <laughs> Made a mess. So this is just an easy, easy craft, but it's a fun way to fix up these plastic. They don't look, you know, they look kind of cheap, to be honest, you know, because they're plastic, little thin cutting boards. We're going to fix it up and make it look uh, pretty cute by the time we're done. There's my Aunt Terry out there and Dee and Dawn. Okay, I need a paintbrush. It will take two coats of this chalk paint, but it goes on pretty easy. And like I said, I already did the one side. And then when we're all done with this project, because we're painting on plastic, we will use a varnish on it, which I probably won't do on the video because you don't need to see me just put clear varnish on, but I will seal it. And I'll show you what varnish I'll be using. So if you would like to recreate this, you'll know what to use. So I'm just putting a coat of this moss green on there. Of course, do any color you like. I'm using the green because it kind of pulls the pretty green in this napkin out. I have so many pretty napkins <laughs> that I want to use, but I can't do all napkin crafts. <laughs> I like to switch it up a little bit. But there's so many pretty ones that I've had so many friends send me or that I've bought. It's just a fun way to add a design to any of your crafts. Okay, make sure I get... Now I had a sweet friend give me a um, Lazy Susan. I could have gotten that out tonight. I don't use it every night, but I could have got it out for this and I forgot. Okay, we're going to dry it really quick, and I'll save 
hi to some people. Hi, Karen and Mary. Yes, Linda, I use the moss and the celery. I like both of them. And I forgot to, I was getting kind of close. Don't get too close to this because it is plastic. You want to keep your heat at a distance. I made two of your coffee filter trees. Aw, fun. I will read the rest of that because it is scrolling up too fast. Those are so fun. Okay, I'm drying this. Let it get really dry. And I am. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm late to the party. Nope, we're just getting started. Just starting. Hi, Emma. Okay, so we have one coat on there. We're going to put one more coat. So these are just the white cutting boards from Dollar Tree and I am painting it <laughs> with chalk paint. You can use chalk paint to paint just about anything. And I am painting both sides. I already did the back ahead of time or front, whichever I decide to use. Whichever one I want to use for the front. They both look the same, so it doesn't matter. Just put a nice even coat of your paint all the way around. Goes on really smooth. Make sure you get all the runs, though. Don't leave any of those. dry it and then we're gonna add some fun stuff to it and fix it up and make it look really cute oh thank you Carol thank you thank you I hope so I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope it inspires you and gets you crafting and decorating on a budget or gifting on a budget creating things to give to others so fun. Let's see how we're doing on the sides here. Make sure I get all the runs real quick. Okay. Now with chalk paint you have to be kind of careful because if you try to put too many layers on it and it's not all the way dry it will start caking up on you. I know you guys have heard that before. Most of you probably have. So your best to do a couple, two or three thin coats. Oops, don't get too close with your heat. Thank you for those stars. Thank you, thank you. Welcome Carolyn and Debbie. Oh, my napkin is blowing away. Whew. Keep blowing it away over there. Aw, oh, thank you. Kind of hold that down. <laughs> Does that say I'm saying like how do you oh for the reminder? Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> I cannot see comments very well. Thank you for answering for me. I saw some people answering. I appreciate it. I see some ladies get on here and their husbands are reading the comments for them or their kids. I can't get mine to do that yet. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to be on camera, but they're still too shy. Okay. So then look how pretty this pretty moss green is. Looks so good. And you know what? The back. I was going to leave like a white circle right in the middle for my napkin, but it, then I changed my mind. Actually, I don't have to worry about doing all that. We'll just put a little bit and get that. We're going to cover it up anyways. I almost forgot. I've changed my mind a couple times. Let's dry that real quick.
And then we're going to use some craft sticks. So these are the bigger craft sticks that you can get at Dollar Tree. They come 60 in a pack. We're going to use those tonight. So I'm going to set this aside just a little bit and close up the green. Let's set this over here just in case. In case I see a little spot I need to touch up. Okay, and then we're going to take our craft sticks. These are the bigger ones that look like this. And we're going to take some cutters. These are my side cutters from Ace Hardware that I use all the time. And a pencil. And actually bring this thing back over here. And we are going to cut the rounded edges off of the paint sticks. So I'm just going to go ahead and snip one end off and try to get it as straight as you can. Snip it off and then you're going to lay it in the inlay, the inside of the cutting board. It kind of dips down just a little bit. Lay that in there and then draw a line with your pencil where it ends on the other side. Just like that. And then cut it off. And then make sure it fits so it fits in there. So then you have one that's a pattern. So then you just use the same one, put it on your next popsicle stick or craft stick, take your pencil, draw your lines, and then cut them off. And you make enough to line the whole inside of the cutting board. And then this is going to add a nice layer to make it look a little more expensive. It's adding a layer of wood on the cutting board. So it just makes it look a lot nicer. Hi Angie from Central Florida. Well, welcome, welcome from Florida. I hope you are away from all the storm stuff that went on and the mess. I hope you are safe and all your things and family. Let's make sure this one needs a little, be a little shorter. Okay, so you just cut them. Keep cutting them until you line the whole inside of your cutting board. I'm just going to do a few. I have a bunch ready already ahead of time to put on here. So you don't have to watch me cut and I'll count them so you know how many you need. I can't remember for sure. Let's see, three, six, I think 10. I think you need 10 total. Just cut them off with your cutters. Whatever kind of cutters you have, they cut pretty easy. And then just make sure they fit in there like that. So what I did was I left a third of them the natural color. And then I did a third of them, where's it at? Plaster, like a cream color. Waverly plaster and then a third of them I stained with the antiquing wax from Walmart it's in the Waverly brand as well so when I put the wax on there really easy take a wipey take your sponge brush wipe it on easy put a coat of that on there and then wipe it off with your wipey unless you want it really dark you could do a couple coats however dark you want it so then I just wiped it off and it was stained that easy so we're going to set that aside and I will lay these all out so you can see what I have here we're going to set that one aside and let it dry just in case we need it. And we are going to get rid of this just in case there's some paint, wet paint on it. Let's get rid of that, slide it over. And we're going to flip to this side, I think, just like that. Okay, so here are my paint sticks. Not paint sticks, craft sticks <laughs> that I already cut and stained and painted. Snips. Oh yeah, you can use any kind of snip. Scissors will even cut them. You can use scissors. Um, they work as well. So then I just staggered my craft sticks on here. I did the natural and then, I don't know, remember if I did the stained one and then there's the cream colored one. 
and then went back in a pattern. Did the natural again, and then the stained. And I just followed the same pattern all the way up, just like that. Let's make sure that's not a stained one. Natural, stained. You can do whatever colors you like, but this little bit of wood just makes this little cutting board look so much more expensive. Then cream color, same pattern, natural, and then stained one. And now there's just a smidge of space at the top. So then I just kind of space them out a little and then I'll glue them down just like that. But look how cute, so cute. And all those pretty colors with the natural wood and the dark wood and the cream wood with this moss green. I think it just looks really fresh, really pretty. Let's see, hello Nikki, thank you for joining. Let's see, snips. Oh, I didn't see something about snips. Oh, thank you, Carol. Okay, so we're gonna just hot glue it down. Now you can use, we're gonna use a little E6000 tonight too, but um, I think the hot glue is gonna hold fine because these, just fine, these craft sticks are, I'm gonna move my chair up because it's squeaky. They are really light and the chalk paint gives you a nice surface that the glue adheres to. So I think it'll be okay. If for some reason they act like they wanna pop loose, then you can put a little E6000 or super glue, whatever kind of bonding glue that you use. I know everybody has their favorite that they like to use. And I'm using the Gorilla Hot Glue in a high temp. glue that right on there just like that just a fun way to fix up these cutting boards adding just some craft sticks to it does not get easier any easier or any cheaper really I mean you get 60 of these and I used one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven for this and then the cutting boards a dollar twenty five So really inexpensive, really budget friendly, and super easy. And you don't have to have power tools out <laughs> to cut these craft sticks. Because I know power tools are intimidating for some people. They can be for me too. Just depends on the tool. Big saws I'm not a fan of. I can use a scroll saw, I don't mind that. Hi, Becky. Good evening. I'm just putting these in a pattern and gluing them down all the way up the cutting board. Where did you get your large glue gun and the small one, the bigger one? This one here that I'm using is a Gorilla glue gun from Walmart. And it works great. I just got it at Walmart in the craft section. I did have my, I mean, I have my other one that I love, but it, I think I've worn it out. So I had to get a new one. And I was at Walmart and I saw this one and I tried it and it works. But this one is a great sure bonder. You can get it on Amazon and it's wireless. It has the charging stand and you put it on the charging stand and you can use a cord with it. This one worked great. I ha used it for over two years, but I just wore it out. <laughs> and I have not ordered another one. And I think they're around $20, which is not bad for as much as I use it. Use it every day. So it lasted quite a while using it every day. Okay, as soon as I get these, I have four more. I'll hold it up so you can see. And it feels like it is on there. It's stuck. So it sticks to that chalk paint really well. You can layer whatever colors you want. If you don't like the natural wood or the dark stain, of course, do any color you want. Making sure they're gonna fit. 
because I'm putting a little bit of space, just a hair of space between them since there was a little bit left over at the top. Two more, two more. Get those on there. Let's make sure that's going to fit. Yes. Last one. Love the natural wood. I do too, Irene. I'm really loving it here lately. It just, I don't know. It's just so airy and cheery and just, I like it. And like I said, fresh looking. Okay, make sure those are all on there. Look at that. So cute. Easy way to fix up one of those plastic cutting boards. Now we're going to put our pretty napkin on there. And all I did was um, cut one of the squares. I got these from one of my sweet friends. Kirsten sent me that. Well, she sent it in with her son, who's in my class. A whole pack of these. So I am going to be sending 10 of them out tonight. If you would like one of these, just say it so in the comments. <laughs> so I will know and I will randomly pick 10 to get those tonight. If you would like to make something with this pretty little napkin. So I went ahead and pulled all the ply apart. It's three ply and down to the one ply and cut around one of the wreaths. And it says grateful, thankful, blessed on there. It's kind of faint, but I'm going to put it on here where the letters are on the lighter craft sticks. They're going to be over the cream color and the natural wood. They don't show up as good on the darker wood. So I'm going to make sure when I space it on here that it's right over top two of those lighter sticks. Okay, so we're going to just Mod Podge, decoupage it on there. I should not have shaken, shook that. I should have just rolled it, but that's okay. Started to shake it. <laughs> we're going to take a sponge brush and this is just the decoupage medium from Walmart. I actually bought another thing of it because it actually is cheaper than Mod Podge and I got more for less and it works just as good. This is the brand premium decoupage. It works just the same and you get it's a bigger bottle <laughs> and I got the matte finish. Okay we're gonna lift up part of this and I'm just gonna put a layer actually you know what we're just gonna lift the whole thing up and put it won't hurt to put it on there on the whole area because it dries clear and it'll help seal it. So we're just going to put some of that on there right where I think the napkin's going to be. I'll wipe off this I got on the edges. And then I am going to let we're going to try I'm going to try to see how it works with the iron on here to iron it on even with all these kind of uneven surface with the different craft sticks. We'll see how it works. It should work, hopefully. Okay. Let's just dry that just a smidge. You don't even have to dry it, but just make it kind of tacky. And then put your napkin right on there, making sure I get on the light colors so I can see the words. And then push down all your edges. I did not grab any um, saran wrap, so hopefully the iron does the trick. We'll just go like that. Smooth out some of those wrinkles. Hot iron. And put it right on there. And then this hot iron on the plastic probably not would not be that great, but I'll, when I'm putting it on the wood, I'll try to make sure I keep it on the wood as I am setting it on the plastic <laughs> on the edge over there because my iron is kind of wide. And that worked really good. I'm making sure all those edges are down. That worked great. Look how cute. So simple. It does not take a lot to make these look really cute. 
Didn't take a lot, any, hardly anything. Craft sticks and a napkin. Okay, and then we are gonna seal the whole thing. So when I varnish, I'll just varnish the whole thing right over the napkin and all. So it'll make sure it seals all this chalk paint because it is on plastic, it will scratch off. So you do wanna seal it. So that is on there. So pretty, need one of those napkins. Oh good, yes, if you are interested, just say and I will randomly, I'll have my daughter randomly pick 10 <laughs> for me. Okay, now let's wrap. We're gonna do a couple more things with this. I have some jute rope around here somewhere, a piece. We're gonna wrap it around the handle. I am gonna put a bow on it. And then I have a vegetable can that I washed and I painted with the green. I painted it so that it doesn't rust. Just use the same moss green and we're gonna attach that to it. You don't have to do this part, but we're gonna attach it on the back and I'll show you why in a minute here. Let's put some jute rope around the handle first. So I'm just gonna hot glue it on there cause it sticks really well. Let me see how I'm doing on time. I'm good. Yes. I had to think what time I started, 8.30. So we're good, I always lose track. Just put some hot glue on the back and then we're gonna wrap it around several times. And this just adds that natural element to the top like that. So pretty, it just matches with the craft sticks down there. So easy, put some hot glue and then cut it. Let that set. Well, I gotta get down further on the scissors. Okay, just like that. Turned in late, or tuned in late. That's okay, Catherine. Please, oh good, thank you, thank you. Guys, keep putting it out there and then I'll have Allie my daughter, Allie, it'll probably be tomorrow because she's probably already, she had school today. So she's probably already going to bed. Okay, now let's make a bow. So we're gonna use a little bit of raffia. I just have a little bunch of raffia here. And we're gonna take the same jute rope and the easy, easy bow, nothing fancy. I'm gonna wrap some of this jute twine or rope around really tight around my raffia and tie it. Oops, just tie it in a knot or just, we'll just tie once because then we're gonna make it into a bow. So tie it on there just like that. And then just your normal everyday loopy loop bow, two loops. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Straighten it out once I get it tied here. Oh, I pulled that tight. It doesn't want to pull through. There we go. Get my two tails down here. Where's that one? I want it back around the front of the raffia. And then I'll probably trim this up a little bit. Simple, nothing fancy at all, kind of simple. Let's make those loops a little smaller. I don't like them quite that big. And then we're gonna glue it right at the base of our jute rope that I wrapped. You could put a flower up here. You could put a ribbon with a pretty colors or patterns, whatever you like. If you know me, I like it more simple, a little more timeless. It'll last a lot. I just like timeless things that I don't get tired of. <laughs> so if it's more simple, I like it a lot longer. Okay. We have the bow on there and we're gonna trim our tails right here and then trim up this raffia just a smidge. I kind of like it a little bit longer than the bow. Just like that. Let's get that one. See, look how cute. You can trim it. Let's see if I need to trim it a little bit more. And then I have a cute little button we're gonna put in the middle. Let's trim this up just a smidge. Okay, I have a button somewhere. 
Make sure I didn't lose it. It's so pretty. I love it. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys like it. I hope it inspires you. This is just a fun way to fix up those Dollar Tree cutting boards. And it would make a cute, really cute gift for not very much at all. You can make a bunch of them for Christmas. You could hang them on a package or stick them on the top of a package because they're not real big. Super cute. Okay, there's our button on there. See how cute? And that button matched. Had the dark brown and the light natural color. So cute. You could put a little um, ledge here to have you rest your phone on and make a little phone stand. We've done several of those before. Okay, but we're going to put a vegetable can that I painted on the back because mine is going to hold either you can do flowers or you can do your utensils, a utensil holder. So we're going to use E6000 for this and hot glue. This is just a big, I got this at Walmart, E6000. This is a big tube. I'm just going to run a bead of it right down the side. Oops. You can use any kind of container. You could use a jar, a mason jar, um, a wood container from Dollar Tree. And then we're going to put some hot glue on both sides. Oh, rats. I wanted to put felt. I'm going to put some felt. Erg. Shoot. I need to trace around that felt really quick. Got ahead of myself. Hopefully, I know the E6000 won't dry, but the hot glue, I might have to put a little more. Because I don't want the metal on the countertop to scratch, or if it gets wet, the felt will help protect it. And it just makes it look nicer too. So we'll go ahead and trace it, and then I can cut it and glue it on there. Yeah, let's put a little more hot glue on there. Okay, then I can glue the felt. I was gonna do it beforehand, but I'm gonna flip it around and make sure I get this in the middle of my cutting board. And I'm setting it on the table so they're flush. They're both flat and level. Love the pretty color. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, that's my cousin Kathy out there. <laughs> Would be cute to put Initials on it, yes, that would be really cute, especially if you're going to give it as a gift, personalized gift. There we go. Can on the back. Let's make sure that is on there. And then that E6000 will dry, and it's not going anywhere. Let's cut this felt real quick. We're going to glue it on the bottom. That's going to make the can not clingy on the counter. Okay, I totally forgot. I wanted to do that beforehand. Okay, I'm gonna flip this upside down. Glue that right on the bottom. I'm just gonna put hot glue all over. And then stick that felt right there. That just finishes the bottom of the can. I still need to do the try the rolling pin. Oh, that was a fun one too. Another kitchen craft. <laughs> These are easy to make for gifts. Yes, for a Christmas gift. So fun. Super easy. Oops, let's make sure that's because then it raised it up a little. I want to make sure that it stays. I might have to pull it off and raise it up just a smidge. That felt raised it up. I'm going to pull it loose and we're going to do it again. Oops, I need a glue stick. Make sure, do your felt first if you're going to put felt on it. Because it raised it up where it was kind of high on the back end. Okay, hold that on there. Let that dry. Aw, thank you, Kathy. That E6000 will dry overnight and then it won't be able to, you won't be able to pull it off like I did so easily. Much better. Put the felt on first <laughs> so that it will stand. 
Okay, so now you could put your utensils in there. I'm going to hold it just because I got that glue on there. So you could put those in there. That would be super cute. That could hold any kitchen utensils. You could put some floral foam, and I got all kinds of pretty florals here. If you put floral foam in the bottom of that can, and then stick all those pretty florals in there. I'm just going to hold them on there. I'm not going to rearrange them, but just so you can kind of see if you put flowers in it, that would be super cute. So yeah, that's what I have for you tonight. Oops, I'm getting hooked. Let's grab that off of there. You could also do a bigger vegetable can. If you wanted more space than just that little can to put utensils in, it works. You can't see it behind. I'll hold up this for you so you can see. You can't see the can. So you could use the bigger one if you wanted a bigger area to put things in. But I opted for the smaller one. So that's what I have for you tonight. I hope that inspires you. If you're interested in one of these, let me know and we'll do a random 10 tomorrow. I'll post that. I also wanted to show you, if you saw the um, door craft that I made, I don't know, a couple weeks ago and people were asking where to get a door, look what I found at Dollar Tree. $5. In the 3 and $5 spot, they had... Um, white ones, green ones, and red ones. And they already have a handle on them. They already have a sign. You could leave it as is. You could fix it up, make it even cuter. If you liked putting the um, cutting mat like I did behind it with the tea light to make it light up, you could totally do that. So these are at hopefully your Dollar Tree too. They're at our Dollar Tree here. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it inspires you. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I will see you all next time. Have a good night. Bye.